Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, um, this is part two of my visit to Kibworth Antique Centre in Kibworth in Leicestershire. Um, so what happens in part two? I do buy something, but in fact I buy two things, but I only spend four pounds, but it is glass. Yeah. And what else? Yes, and also I have a new reference which I use in this um, video as well. So new reference, dun dun dun. And um, I will do a review of that sometime. But anyway, um, so let's get on and have a look at the glass. Got a pair of um, late Victorian decanters here, They're fairly standard. Come on. The colours are a bit funny, they're a bit yellowish looking. It does show that even into late Victorian periods, colours were not completely getting clear colour mixes. I don't know if you can see that it's got a bit of a yellow look to it. Up here though, above, got a couple of, yeah, don't know what that is, but this, I think this is Thomas Webb, is it marked? No, I think it is. The colour, uh, I might be wrong, might be white for us. Look at it. actually, now that I've got it out and looking at the colour differently, it might be, but I think it's Thomas Webb. And this, I don't recognise this at all. So it's still a nice thing though. Uh, what does it say on the label? It says it's white for us. I'm not sure about that. What's this one say? I think that says it's white fries as well, difficult to tell. This book is the um, Victorian Pattern Glass and China book. And yeah, it's a uh, catalogue from a department store. And yeah, these are the kinds of decanter it is. You can see this book is from about 1880. See, there's a few that are similar. And then if I go forward in time, this is the, this book is called Edwardian Shopping. And we've got a couple more with these similar kinds of book. So yeah, so these books are about 30 years apart. And um, yeah, they, they were making them earlier than this. So this type of decanter made over a very long period of time and in fact this the glasses that we were looking at in the other book are actually imported ones so it doesn't even say what country they're from i just know that they're imported because the pages that are english glass say they're english and these pages those pages i was just showing you just now are not uh, uh, named as english glasses so anyway there you go i oh, know i don't have any references for those vases so i thought just do a quick for a quick giggle um put in a quick search and look at this this one and this one appear as thomas webb um and there's a there's a couple of others there's another one there um so yeah and strangely enough this one as well as appeared thomas webb and, and i wouldn't allude to that the reason i saying think these are thomas webb is because i've seen them use this shape with a different malted pattern on it um, and the exact same color and it be have the web mark on it. So that's why I think it's web, only through correlating through this shape and color. Um, so yeah, and it's not in the, in the um, White Friars books either. So that's, that's my only reason for thinking it's possibly web. But a lot of other people think it's web as well and um, label it as such. Got a few bits of impoli here. Um, these look very impoli-esque as well. I quite like this little. I know, it's not glass. I quite like that. It says it's Art Nouveau impressed mark. Right, it's empty. 1891. I'm not going to turn it over because it's got a candle and I'm going to drop it or something. But um, yeah, I quite like that. So 
I think the orange vases were listed as Victorian, but I think I found them here. They are Empoli from the 1970s. Um, this is the 20th century glass website. Um, this guy's usually pretty accurate. So um, yeah, I'm happy to believe this. And um, yeah, he's got other vases like this. Um, you can see it seems to be a, there's a green one in the same shape. And um, yeah, there's, there's a number of different shapes that he's got here that are similar-ish, um, but they're all look like they're from the same manufacturer. So, but he's not saying who. Got a bunch of modern glasses look like they're probably cardinal. Yeah, don't know what that's about. Steins, maybe brought from Germany. Yeah, I don't recognize it. This looks, oh, no, don't know. But this one, it looks like it's Royal Dalton or something like that. Is it marked at all? Can I see a mark? No. The stop is a bit like the um, Cumbria. Ones, but I'm not sure if it is that. And where the neck is, it's very old Dalton. So let's see if I can actually pin that ship's decanter there. That would be quite interesting. So I've been through um, the replacement glass website. I didn't find that decanter in there. I, um, but the bulk of the ship's decanters in there, they don't have a picture of them. So yeah, that's a bit, a bit crap. But anyway. Um, this is the only example I've been able to find it, of it. It's on sale, I think, or it's sold. It's sold. They don't tell you the price. Um, and what they've got here is bearing all the skills of Stevens and Williams of Briley Hill, which means they're guessing, just like my guess was Royal Dalton. But yeah, the, their guess is a, is a guess too. So yeah, they're no further forward than I am. Got some little sherry glasses in here, and I think, yeah, I think these are white fries. What's it say? Sherry glass, eight pounds. I think it's a white fries pattern um, from the 1970s. I think my brain is saying garland is a pattern, but I'm not certain. But I think those are white fries. We're looking at the whitefriesglassworks.com website, and this is the white fries catalogue for 1978. And yes, so this is the garland pattern, and I think it's one, I think it's that one there. It's sherry glasses from the garland pattern from 1978. Um, they're not in any of the earlier catalogues, so um, they were probably only made for a couple of years. Um, I do like the way the foot is with the little trumpet foot. That looks quite nice. Um, so yeah, I'm a little surprised at myself that that popped into my head. A whole bunch of um, Royal Dalton glasses here. Yeah, there's, there's loads of them in fact. Look at this. They're saying, yeah, Royal Dalton crystal, George and Small. Yeah, let's have a look at this. We'll look this pattern up and see if we get a date for it. And um, some more down there. I don't recognize this though. And I'll see if I can find these urns. There's one here, there's one here. Um, and this is one of those corners where I was saying you couldn't see into it, but yeah, this is what it's like. Oh, when I can see something over there, let's go and have a look. So I've come to the replacements.com website and found the Royal Dalton Georgian. And I have a little bit of value add here because we've got dates. So, uh, not all everything that they have in here has got dates but this one does it's 1988 to 1990 which is quite a short run um, and it's this one here it's a wine glass it looks like it's a slightly smaller wine glass so there you go and yeah 23.99 a, a piece but you have to remember this is the most expensive place that you're ever going to buy it um, and i think she they were selling them for 10 pounds a piece so yeah that's that's a good price and this is what i could see yeah they've got french hourglass i think this is made by vans um we can try and find it 
Uh, yeah, it's quite a nice one. It's very styly, almost Art Nouveau. Um, but yeah, it's, it's um, you know, probably from the 60s or 70s or something like that. But we'll try and um, pin that one down. Usually when you see these um, pulled bowls, um, they're usually coloured. Now, the one we were looking at is clear, and the, the company that springs to mind for clear ones is Vans France. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but uh, V-A-N-N-E-S. There's no good references for it, but I've been to France. I've seen a lot of them. I've seen them with labels on, and they're usually clear. Um, they do a lot of them with ribs, so they do some some that are just long, really long, some of them. But um, yeah, they've usually got ribs, so you can see here. Look, you see what I mean? The one that we were looking at there just had, you know, it was a unidirectional one, so it's just like a rib going a long one with a rib going each way. But um, yeah, so this is what they usually look like. Um, this one's a bit like it, but a bit shorter. And I've been going around through trying to find one that's exactly like it. But you can see a lot of them have got the they're clear and they've got these ribs. Um, I did actually find one that was for sale that was close-ish, or it was sold actually, but this one here, um, this looks like quite a smart website, never seen it, Room of Art, Modern Art and Design, but yeah, this is, this is the kind of thing it is, um, and I've had a look on eBay, the oh, don't go back, no, no, I've gone too far, this is me going to the end of the line, this is what happens. Go back to one. There you go. And um, yeah, you can see there's the odd one which has got a bit of colour in, but generally they're all clear. Um, and the price is a bit all over the place. Uh, and I presume it was, size is a big factor in this. I mean, there's a long one, and uh, that's £65. I haven't looked at it sold. Let me have a quick look. Difficult to tell. There's not. There's not many. There you've gone back to gaskets. That's no good. Anyway, um, yeah. There's no really good examples for pricing against. Um, so, and the one that we're looking at here, it says circa 1960. Um, it's probably. I think they're they're definitely um, vintage. I wouldn't like to put a date on them though. And you know I'm always on the lookout for stoppers and there are two stoppers and they're two pounds each which is nice and let's have a look yeah these are kind of like this one looks a bit later I think this one's probably 1840s 50s this one's from 1830s or 40s I think um, these are coming home with me for my stopper collection you never know when they might come in useful I thought I would use my own website to um, show you the type of decanter those stoppers came from so if I go here there's cylinder type so this one here scroll down um, bum, bum, bum. this one here this is the closest one I think there you go so this type of cylinder decanter, decanter, this is called a royal shape, um, but there, there's slight variations on these. You can see here, there's all sorts of different things going on, different stoppers, but this is, this, this type of decanter was pretty much a staple for about 20 years. So you do see them out and about, and you quite frequently see them with the wrong stopper, so yeah just handy just in case you never know there might be something i'll pick up for two pounds and if i can just plop a stopper in it for a couple of quid as well it's all hunky-dory this is a couple of the little rooms i was talking about earlier so um let's go in see what we can see nice that's quite cool um oh look here Stossel. What have they got written on it? 
So yeah, this is Stuzzle, this uh, Hermanova hut factory, um, Czech Republic from the 1930s. I'll be able to find that. So I have a new book called Sklo Union by Marcus Newell and it comes with a CD and it's got catalogues in it and this is one of them. This is um, the Hermanova hut cat factory, um, Stossel. And yeah, so this is the service that we're talking about. These sort of like, with these kind of, I don't know what you'd call them, chunky bits that's coming down the side and strips. Um, I think it's actually these two bowls here that we're looking at there. Um, I think there are, are more pieces that are not here that I've seen in this service. So we've only got these, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is supposed to, it says pre 1958, but I do, I've seen other places saying these are from the 1930s, the design, design wise. So um, yeah, and Stossel is still going today. And I will do a review of this book, okay, so that it, it is a good book. So if you can pick it up cheap, it's it's worth getting. Yeah, I don't recognise these two, but I do recognise this. It's the um, ubiquitous um, plum blossom bars here from China in the 1970s. Um, from the China National Light Industrial Products Import Export Corporation. Yeah, I think I've got it, all the words in there. So, um, yeah, I think I might show the advert for that one because this one doesn't come up very often. We're looking at an article in the glassmuseum.com website by Angela Bowie, or Bowie, sorry, Bowie. Um, and I think I did get the name right, China, uh, China National Light Industrial Products Import Export Corporation. Yeah, um, this is these pictures are from a the Pottery Gazette and Glass Trade Review from 1972, and um, their flower vases is called the Plum Blossom Range, and it's not this one; it's this one here. So it's an FV190. Um, but it's in blue and that's what makes that one unusual because normally I've seen more frequently they're in red and orange um, I think then probably green is the next most common and blue that dark blue seems to be the um, the rarer color for them so yep yeah, that's what it is uh, and the price is okay for, for it I mean it's it's a proper vintage piece from the 70s so um, yeah and it's not copying it so people always put them as Murano they're not there's no Murano that's like this so um, yeah they're not Murano if anything because this is saying that they're like Victorian yeah they're a bit like Victorian but there are features about them that are typically Chinese now I've seen something cool here look at this will even come out look at that Ooh. I think, I think, 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 it might be white fryers in aqua. Yeah, I think. Uh, get it back in. So, I'm not going to rush and buy it because, yeah, I'm not supposed to be collecting that. But, um, yeah, I think. 28 pounds might end up being a bit light for this so um, yeah that's quite a nice thing this is the white france glassworks website and we're looking at the catalog for 1950 the white france catalog that is and this is the bowl i was thinking of that sprung to mind with this with this rim it's about the right size but this is just circular that one was more of a pentagon shape with like five lobes on the bottom and I don't know I've been winding forward through the other ones and I can't find one exactly like that so now I'm a little bit unsure I think the color I think I said aqua I think meant to be emerald I think it is emerald I think it is them they do a lot of five lobed on, on the base five low bowls and vases and things five seems to be a favorite number of theirs 
Um, I did have a quick look in um, in my Stromberg's Heighten catalog, and uh, yeah, they do similar, something similar, but that's got six lobes, so that's no good either. Yeah, I'm not sure I th if it's not white fries. It's still a good thing, and it's still, I think, if we can put a name on it, it's worth more than twenty-eight pounds. But without a name, that is the price. But it is a very nice bowl, and it would be something that I would want. But it would have to be Stromberg's Heighton because that's the one that I'm collecting. Anyway, regardless, I think it might be white for us, but I can't find a, a catalogue entry for it. So I've come into this room and I immediately get sucked into. Dun, dun, dun. Look at that. Palace Royal inlaid rosewood. What does that say? Glass conduits. Yeah, that is super cool. Look at, look at the base. Yeah. I really like that. It's £160. Yeah. That is very nice. Um, there's a couple of other bits of glass in here that I don't recognise. The dog and a squirrel. Very Murano-esque kind of things. Um, there's this, but there is some other nice glass in here, so let's um, move on and have a look at that. This book is um, The Decanter, Ancient to Modern by Andy McConnell. And, um, yeah, so I can't find any wooden stands that are like that. Not as good quality as that one. Um, out of all of this, these are the only decanters that are anywhere n near similar in quality and they are on a um, silver or silver plate stand and um, yeah so what you've got there is you've got a wooden stand but it's a very high quality wooden stand with very high quality decanters and uh, yeah I've not seen that before um, in fact uh, Actually, I can show you something here. You see, I have some decanters that are probably similar in quality to those. You can see here, look at that, with all that cutting. But they're on a plate stand. And then I have a whole bunch of um, wooden ones over here. So, yeah. Uh, but the decanters are not quite as good. Or some of them are good, but not quite. They're a bit older, actually. So, But anyway, um, you get my meaning that actually... That is, a, that is a really unusual thing. I've not seen it before. And it's probably dated to around 1820 or something like that, look, judging by the decanters. Got a few bits here. This looks bohe very bohemian. Oh, it says, says, says Lambert style. To me, it looks very bohemian with this style of star cutting, but it might be French. Val St. Lambert. Uh, it says style though, yeah. Got a jack and pulpit, and then you've got this um, Phoenician glass, so that must be marked, etched. That is very nice, so that is a really cool piece of art glass there. And then, dun dun dun, Georgian gin glass, I think. I think they might be right on that. Got a nice little, can you see a conical foot? So, um, yeah, I quite like that. Let's go down the shelf. I thought I'd show you what was going on in my head there. So, uh, we've done a search on uh, Val St. Lambert glass here. And this is basically, I've said red, red glass. And if you look at all the cutting in here, it's mainly, they're, they're cutting panels and um, diamond patterns and uh, fan cuts and all sorts of things but I don't know what that kind of star is called but none of that there's loads of other techniques being used here and when they do the stuff when they do do stars they seem to be the the symbol point where uh, the cuts are completely crossing each other at the center of the star and you just get create a star that's sort of like the normal way um, so yeah, so that's why I'm thinking, is this Val St. Lambert? Is it not? 
you know, they did do a lot of red case glass, but so this is why I'm thinking Bohemian. So I'll just put in Bohemian cut glass star here. And this is how they do their stars. You can see where it's like a more complex star of David. There is a word for this kind of star. I can't remember what it is, um, but you can see, look, there's one there. Um, they use it all over the place. And that is the style of star that we were looking at. Um, there's a few others here, but yeah, you saw what I was looking at is, is this kind of star. Um, but there's really, is that going to expand up? Yeah, you can see it there, this kind of thing. Yeah, this is very bohemian. It's, um, it's one of the motifs that they use a lot. I'm not saying it's exclusive to them, but it's something that they do a lot. Um, so that's why I would lean that way. I can't be 100% certain, but if I can't actually pin it exactly, that's the way I would lean towards more Bohemian as opposed to French. Yeah, so this is where it's happening. We've got a little bucket bowl, circa 1800 plus that one. You've got this. Bethica and diamond pattern little gin glass that is nice I think that's Irish I think that might be made by cork let's um try and dig through your books I can at least show you I've got decanters with that pattern on that a cork one so I can at least show you that I'm using my own website as a reference again um yes love decanters.co.uk anyway Got a section on Irish glass. I will show you that pattern. It's this one here. I think this is it's better than doing it out of a book because I've got a good picture of it here. This decant, let's get down to it. Dun, dun, dun. This one here. Yeah. So this design here is called Vesica and Diamond. The Vesica being this kind of Vesica shape. <laughs> and then this is the diamond. Yeah, so, um, and if you look, it's got the same crisscross pattern within the the, the oval, pointed oval, football shape, or whatever, rugby ball shape. Anyway, so that's Vesica Diamond. This is um, a design that's always attributed to Cork Glass Company. If you look here, where's it gone? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six references, book references with page numbers and everything for this pattern. So, yeah, and cork circa 1800, but it might be earlier. Generally, this type of decanter, people usually say something like 1780 something to 1800. Um, I've probably dated that the wrong way around and that really I should be putting the earlier date first and the both kind of ended it with the date that it ends, ends with. Anyway, regardless, it's it's a pattern that's heavily used by Cork Glass Co. I've actually got two of these decanters. That's how heavily, um, it's the only, not a pair bought separately, but they, this, this is the one that's referenced a lot in books and um, yeah, occasionally pops up on eBay and I've managed to pick up two very cheap. So yeah, um, so yeah, that, that glass would not quite go with this, but it's very close pattern to it. It's just, there's little variations on it. I'll show you, actually, let me show you another glass just for, for the fun of it. If I go into glasses, you've got this one here, which is like a, a newer pattern. This is, I've said 1810, and uh, you can see it's got the same Vesica and diamond pattern. The same with the crisscrossing. And then um, I've got one here, which is the closest glass that I have to it, which is this one, which is not a Vesica and diamond, but it's got this swags here with this same crisscross pattern in it. So yeah, that's what we're talking about. So that was part two. Um, it does feel like I've got about, yeah, about a million more bits of film to go through from Kibworth. So yeah, this is gonna be a long one. Um, but 
you know it's worth it. You know, it's all a learning experience. And um, so with that said, all the references I used will be in the description below. All the contact details I have uh, for Kibworth will be in the description below as well. And thank you for watching and have a good night. Good night.